broker and it's like blah 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 yeah yeah you know okay he gave me his paper and I was like blown away I'm like this kid's smart <laughs> he knows his yeah. stuff so by 2013 we we're like man you got to write a book so he did write a book on hex signs myth and meaning you know mm -hmm. and it's a fascinating book so during that process we discussed how ghosting happens by the way my dad actually coined the name ghost by an interview in a book with Don Yoder and asked you know what's it like to go up there and paint and when you get up there and see an old ghost well he's like it, it's like a ghost up there you know <laughs> you don't have to draw it out it's already there so and they just got the old ones that you can see just got named ghosts so I thought it was overlapping paint layers you know one color over top another but the key part was the scribing you know then the wood degrades that scribe line kind of it kind of cuts the wood a little bit but it hardens it and like you see the raised line over it so these are all scribed in these were some of them I used a razor knife to cut lines some I didn't at all but I just want to see how long it would take to naturally do it everybody's mm -hmm. like why don't you sandblast it why don't you? I was like no I want to see how long it takes for for it to happen naturally of course I enhance it by not painting the background you know <laughs> And bees chew at the soft grain to make their paper nest, and that helps add the barn wood effect, you know. Mm. Uh, so I made several benches, and they they turned out really cool. My friend he got married last year, and I said I was going to make him a ghost bench. Oh. So I had the wood, and then he moved to Carolina with his wife, and and uh, well, he was coming up this week, and I'm like, I better. Finish this so he can take it back home. Because yeah. she was like, I thought he was making us a bench. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, he is, he is, don't worry. So, you know, the meanings of hex signs get translated over the years. Mm. The silkscreen industry, which is progressive, progressive art, so to speak, it doesn't hurt my business, but everything gets a meaning. Colors get a meaning. I stick with a, the when I do barn stars, I like to paint stars on a barn. I don't like to paint any other designs. I have, but, and I usually typically black and yellow star points, green and yellow star points. Um, so the eight point star was associated with marriage and fertility. So as fertility goes, it was green and yellow star point, you know, crops in the field. You know, some women go, no, I don't want a fertility sign. I'm like, that's fertility the crops and animals, you know. <laughs> So, oh gosh, funny. as far oh. as the modern, what I call modern hex sign is anything with hearts and birds and tulips. Like Johnny Yacht basically created a modern hex sign. Milton Hill, only that's an original Milton Hill, by the way, right up there behind you. And on the back it says, Milton Hill, star designs, RD2 Hamburg. So, he actually scribed them into the disc. If you felt that, you would feel all the scribe lines in that blue disc right behind him with the gold. Um, so he only did stars and rosettes, geometric designs, where John Yacht added all the hearts of birds and tulips. Mm -hmm. All those were designs off the fractal art. Hearts represented love, tulips represented faith, hope, and charity. Bluebirds of peace and happy. And the distal fink, the distal fink is a translation of the thistle finch, which is a goldfinch. So, mm -hmm. you know, these are doves on there. Well, this would be a distal fink. This is one of my Christmas ornaments, but had with a Santa hat, but that's one of my dad's designs that I changed around a little. I love it. I love how it says Merry Cheesemas. You get oh, this? Oh, yes. Okay. My friend wanted Cheesemas on him, and then uh, <laughs> another guy said, I want one of them for my wife. He hasn't picked it up yet. That's why this one says Cheesemas. <laughs> right downtown that where Johnny Yacht had his studio and that's where my dad met him at the Dite Check right in Lindhurstville and there's still a room in there that has a lot of Johnny Yacht hex signs on the ceiling and all his motifs on the wall and he was an artist before the hex sign craze took off in the 50s the hex tour the folk festival I think his first one was 1951 and I still kick myself for coming home one night I had a 1952 on eBay Got to go back on eBay, and then the next day somebody got it for five dollars more than my top bid. And I'm like, I, 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 
<laughs> you really want to kick yeah. yourself in the butt for that yeah. one. I yeah, stole I, that I jug. That. That's a Johnny Hot jug up there. Oh, There's gosh. five hex signs around it. And he signed it. It was on eBay for 20 bucks. So I had nobody bid against me. I called my brother. He said, don't bid against me. Oh, those are, those are decals on there. I said, no, they're not. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. <laughs> they're oh. hand-painted hex signs. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And Johnny Hot is like, you know, everything's fascinating about his work. I sometimes say there was a lot of, a lot of alcohol mixed in the paint. Uh, he owned a bar, he liked to drink, and uh, interesting things about the headdresses pointing <laughs> this way and the bird on the other side, they're kind of pointing the same direction and like the center star is always offset somehow. And, you know, it's very, it's primitive, but it's fascinating, and, you know, you pay a lot of money to try and get a Johnny Yacht, <laughs> and you pay a lot of money to get a Milton Hill as well. Yeah. It's about the birds thing. You were saying the bluebirds mean, like, Bluebirds are peace and happiness. Gotcha. And then what about, like, other birds, like uh, those over there and roosters and Roosters stuff? represent strength. Roosters strength of mind, strength of body, strength of fellow man. Put two roosters together, and they'll try to kill each other. It's like who's the toughest. <laughs> so. so that's the love and marriage. I like that. This is a Johnny Ott design. His legend was that the the Irish showed the Irish soldiers painted shamrocks on the Dutch soldiers' barracks in the Revolutionary War and danced around and said, "Hurrah for the Irish! We ain't very much, but I don't sight better than the Pennsylvania Dutch." Of course. Johnny, I created this hex sign in the 50s, so. That's <laughs> awesome. These are Tistol Finks for the Irish hex. He painted them green, so I continue to paint them green. This is the Tree of Life. Oh. And still, I don't have all the doodads on here yet. But it came from an old bowl, an Austrian or a British bowl. Somebody gave my dad and said, Can you make a sign to look like this? So it was slightly different. This is my version. There's two versions of mine, and there's one of my dad's versions up in that corner where it has an antique background, which we do a lot in that design. Oh, so Sunri uh, sunflowers, what, what's that mean? It's a sunflower, I, I don't know. You know, butterflies, like the butterfly sign, represent a new life and a new beginning on that sign. But there's a rooster behind you in the milk can, and that's my flower that I put on that. <laughs> I love it. Is that the most popular design? Because I see that on a lot of barns. That design that you're holding there. I've never painted it on a barn. If you, most barns have stars on it. It's rare that you see a distal fink or something like okay. that. A lot of solid star points where okay. these are split in half, you know. Uh, there's a lot of teardrops in them. I'll just pull one out here. And again, this is only my opinion as far as the Dutch word in Berks County was stunna, which means stars. Ach, the stunna on the barn. In Lehigh County, it was known as bluma, which is more floral. So you see a lot more like rosette type of things, floral. In this star, which is a common, my outtake of some of the ones that I've repainted. A lot of them had a sawtooth border. A lot of them had solid star points and independent stars in between and teardrops in between. You know, like that four point has, it's a wider looking tulip up there. But, and that's only my opinion. Uh, we've repainted a lot in the Lehigh Valley. I probably did 20 barns in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, do you do any like birds like peacocks or anything? Or I, I don't, that is a art how. Art Howe was a, another Hexine painter. I bought that off of uh, Roadside America when they had an auction. And there's another Art Howe up there. And he has more portrait. I mean, his stuff is very primitive, but he had such a cool signature. And it's their really interesting sign, so I try to buy them on eBay when I can find them. The rooster up there is done by John Bond. He's an artist in Kempton. He does a lot of landscape and uh, there was a <clears throat> an artist in Kempton in the 20s years ago in the 20s uh, Ben Austrian and he 
His paintings now are twenty, thirty thousand dollars. He did a lot of roosters. Oh. So that's a John Bond who, you know, he loved redoing a lot of Ben Austrian stuff. So that happened to be in 2008 before the election. He said he was going to make a painting, Obama versus M McCain, and put out a ballot box. Well, I went down, and the girl that worked for me said, you got to go down and see that. And I went down, and I was like, I'm buying it. Well, you kind of gave me the idea. He said, well, you know, he, he's from Dutchified. He says, mm. McCain's emblem was the five-point military star, and Obama was the big O, so I just made a barn star in the background. <laughs> I was like, that is really cool. That is cool. I love that painting. That is really neat. You said, how much was it that you paid for for that? For that painting? I think I paid 300 10 years ago. Wow. Or 2008 when Obama and McCain. Yeah, it was 2008. Yeah, to say, that's not, that's not a bad price now, but I bet it went up to where it's like, forget yeah. it. <laughs> I'm not buying. And it was probably 200 and the frame was 100 bucks. Nice. You know, and that one was the same. I think I paid 300 but that is actually a photograph printed on canvas. Wow, wow. And that's the second barn that I painted. Those are six point, six foot barn stars on that. And what is this? This is Milton Hill who had the, the picture there and that. He did uh, very, his fascinating geometry. But Patrick wrote a, a great book. And it has just all kinds of story about Milton Hill growing up doing the folk festival. These are, these are the he colored these when he was in elementary school, and his teachers kept encouraging him to draw. This this design was never painted on a barn until I painted this design on a barn in Lenhartsville six or seven years ago. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a really neat one. I like that. But the story that's... was, he kept these folded up in his paint tray, and he always kept them with him. And I met his daughter. I met both daughters, which are, which is a one of my feel good stories at the folk festival. I had a hill star on my backdrop, and this little old lady comes up and she goes, "I I like that. What is that?" Mm. And I said, "This my dad calls that the hill star. There's a man named Milton Hill, very you know incredible artist, the most prolific barn star painter, blah blah blah." And my dad, you know, we made this, I painted this, but it's a replica of Milton Hills. And she smiles and says, thank you, that was my father. <laughs>